Hi. Hang on. We'll just wait for more people to come. Let's see who's here. Nice. Hi, Vincent. Hi. Just waiting for more people to come. Thanks for joining us in this webinar. Uh, this is my very first time doing a webinar um, for, for the public. Uh, so bear with me. Um, there are a couple of people, I think more than 20 people registered. So we'll just wait for some. I'll wait for about five people at the very least, and then I'll kickstart. In the meantime, in the meantime, just to let you know that there is an opportunity for you to actually share um, your thoughts as well as ask me any question. So let me just explain to you um, the, the interface of Webinar Jam. At the bottom on the right hand side of what you're seeing right now, there is this button called speak. If you actually want to enter the webinar session with me and you have questions for me, uh, please just raise your hand and just click speak. And when you do that, uh, as soon as you do that, what happens is that you are now going to enter um, a, a by default landing page that will get you to actually test your mic, test your camera. All you have to do is just do a quick one second test and that's it, you'll be onboarded into my um, uh, my webinar jam, um, and then we can share the screen, all right? So if that is good, uh, let me know. So what we can do right now, hi, hi, that's nice. Uh, everyone is like coming in, uh, thanks for joining. Um, so like I said, if you wanna join us in our webinar jam, all you have to do, if you wanna speak, uh, speak directly, just raise your hand, click on speak, and I'll accept you into the webinar. Yeah, today's, today's topic is all about tech for small businesses and how I define small businesses uh, is usually by a, a, either a turnover or uh, basically um, physical location um, as to where you operate your business. It could be from home or it could be a coach you're working on. Is, uh, you, or, or you can even have a brick and mortar store. Um, today's agenda, as I mentioned, is to actually teach a little bit more about what is the landscape today with the, with the pandemic that is going on. How do we change our content strategy, what to do for our business now, if we have, been, uh, we have yet to um, you know, come online um, with a full-blown website uh, and all those things. So um, like I said, if you want to join us, uh, please uh, feel free. At the same time, I have actually dropped you um, a PDF, um, a PowerPoint slide that I've prepared uh, to explain to you a little bit more about what is going to go on um, today, all right? So a lot of people are just um, coming in, so that's good. Um, hi, welcome to, welcome to the webinar. Nice, nice, nice. Hi, Nor. Hi, Dan. Nice to see you guys. All right, I'll just wait for about at least five people and I'm just gonna start because it's just a lot of content. So um, as I mentioned, um, the, the people that are coming today, I, uh, I see you guys. Um, you guys, are, uh, you have a lot of different traits. Um, some of us are home-based business owners, some of us are brick and mortar businesses, and some of us are service providers. That means we're not, we don't have any products to sell except for our expertise. Um, today is not so much about how to package your things and, and your services. Um, today is about the reality of, of, of what are we going to do against this pandemic with regards to digital marketing. So I'm going to get straight to it. So I'm just waiting for more people to come and I, because this, this is two hours long and I can go on and on. Uh, but what I want to do is I want you to be participative. So here's your task. So now that I have five people on board, here's the task at the corner. Hi, Dan. There is a chat mode, right? There's a chat mode. Um, I would like you to tell me. Yes, you do. You definitely have a question and answer um, section later. Uh, I'm more than happy, more than happy to share um, um, a lot of things with you, you guys. I really, really want to help. So what we can do right now at the corner of your screen or at the corner of your phone, there is an opportunity for you to actually ask me, um, ask me anything. So what I would like you to do is could you tell me what is the biggest, biggest struggle right now, biggest struggle right now with your business, with your business, um, against this um, pandemic that's going on? Are you struggling with cash flow? Are you struggling with having the issue of going online? And 
you are not um, are you struggling with on social media whatever that you're saying on social media but it's, it's just not um, really really happening uh, right now no one's paying attention to you so uh, could you just spend a little bit of time thinking about your biggest struggle plong that in into the um, the section where you chat with me and then we can start all right um, let's spend about a minute or two to just uh, plong down your concerns your biggest concerns and then we can start all right With regards to digital marketing and your your business, alrighty, all right. I think others might have a problem joining in as the email didn't include. Um, actually, the email does. The email did include a link to join. Uh, but let me just. Let me just uh, do something. Thank you for pointing that out. Maybe, 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 maybe um, we're not getting enough. Hang on, yeah. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. This is the link. If you can pass this link to everyone who has, um, who has, uh, who is, who is intending to join us, please just tell them to join in via this link. Uh, I will tell my team who is on ground. Um, Hang on. Okay. All right. Um, just wanted to let you know that um, the um, the um, just wanted to let you know that the webinar will actually be um, will be recorded, so you will have this uh, entire recording um, being given to you, everyone uh, at the end of the presentation. I am seeing a couple of people, so I am actually going to officially start. If, if you know of anyone right now who actually has some concerns joining, uh, please, 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 um, you know, uh, just send them this link, and then we can start. All righty, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for joining in into my very first webinar. My name is Bella Kaja. I I am the founder and owner of uh, Nimble Marketing Consultancy, which is essentially a digital marketing consultancy that uh, uh, you know that has a niche in social media, and we manage brands across multiple multiple um, industries uh, across SMEs and very very big brands. So I do know a thing or two uh, with regards to what it takes to get online, what it takes to uh, what what. Um, how to really maximize social media for for impact and in this case um is um uh sales in this case is beyond followers is how to build a, a, a how to build advocacy for your brand um and and i've been doing this for four years and this is the very very first time that i'm actually doing it um a webinar style i'm a very high touch person as an individual um usually when i do presentations um Okay, good. Thanks, Noor. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll attend to that. Yeah. Um, so thank you. Please, please drop all your commentaries and your biggest concerns. It's such a small group. I have two hours with everyone. I would love to make this as interactive as possible. Um, as I mentioned, I'm such a high touch person. Um, and to reduce myself to a webinar and in a full uh, screen like that, um, it's really tough, but I'm going to try. Um, the reason why I wanted to do this webinar, because um, with the whole issue of um, COVID, um, it has impacted my, many, many businesses, including the clients that I actually um, have. So a lot of businesses have decided to pull out of social media. A lot of businesses have stalled their content on social media, meaning to say they have absolutely no idea what to say or what to do with their audiences uh, and to their followers, um, or completely, completely um, gone into the shadows and just disappeared. Um, I was, uh, I personally am, um, and doing that, um, I have really, really moved myself from the spotlight and really, like many of the founders that I have here, um, it's a pleasure and honor to be amongst you, actually. Uh, really, really, because I really resonate with what you're going through because I am a small, small business owner myself. Um, so I completely, completely understand that um, how tough and incredibly difficult for us, uh, especially when cash flow is, um, is an issue. 
Oh, the thing about this, I wanted this, I, I didn't really market this conversation or this webinar um, um, to its fullest um, because I wanted to, number one, test the tech. Uh, we are on a platform called Webinar Jam. I know everyone has uh, or is aware of Zoom. Uh, I know everyone is sort of doing Google Hangouts as well. And everyone is also, uh, you know, communicating with their clients and, this, and, and, and their customers via as something as simple as WhatsApp video. We are doing whatever it takes to actually get online, to, con to continue our normalcy. Um, and I think that's commendable and that's great. And I've been a techie for very, very long. I, I understand the space. I understand that it takes a while for the learning curve to um, to actually to actually be to adopt such a learning curve. So Webinar Jam. Okay, let me just tell you this interface called Webinar Jam. Number one, Webinar Jam is not free. It's not a tool that is free like Zoom. It's not a tool that is free like Google Hangout. There has to be an investment um, made for Webinar Jams because it assumes that you're going to create webinars. And you're going to you're going to um, you know, you're going to create content for a very, very large audience as huge as 500 people. Um, and if you want to learn more about Webinar Jam, all you have to do is just go webinarjam.com and you can take a look at um, the different prices that they actually have. Now, the, the, uh, well, I'm not here to promote Webinar Jam. I'm actually telling you the difference between Webinar Jam and Zoom. Now, if you're a small business owner and you actually have to meet your clients and you actually have to um, talk to your clients and stuff like that, look, WhatsApp, I mean like WhatsApp, I have WhatsApp here. Uh, WhatsApp is, WhatsApp video is perfectly fine. Um, you know, it, it, it takes, it takes away the difficulty of just getting to, um, to communicate with your audience or with your clients. It's so easy. WhatsApp for video is one, but did you know that you could actually add more participants in WhatsApp for video? You could actually add more than two people. It could actually be four of you in one WhatsApp video call. So like I said, this is also an opportunity for you to actually continue the conversation um, if, uh, what's, uh, if Zoom and all of these other tools are a little bit too, uh, too difficult, yeah? So what I wanted to share with you um, is how do, how, do, how do we create normalcy back? How do we bring back normalcy? Or in fact, we actually don't want to be normal anymore. Uh, what we want to do is how do we actually... Um, how do I do this? How do we actually, um, you know, break the cycle of what's happening to our business right now and really, really thrive um, in the space in a way that is a lot better than what we have been doing to our businesses before? Because I was doing, like you, introspection for my business. My business, which is a consultancy business, is incredibly not recession proof. It is not. Meaning to say, if there is something that, as, uh, as a pandemic like that, I am incredibly hit, uh, badly hit, and I realized that, like, because we're such in a big ecosystem like this, um, it, it, um, it, I mean, for us, that it is really a legitimate question. What do you even market? What do you even promote? And I am an agency. I'm supposed to set the tone. I'm supposed to be a thought leader. I'm supposed to be, uh, I'm supposed to have the answers as to what to promote, what to, what to say to my clients. And the truth is, I really don't. I really don't. For a moment, I really don't. Um, and if I, I, as a consultant in social media or marketing, uh, am struggling to find um, uh, uh, ways to actually promote our brands on the platform, on such a viral um, social platform, um, I'm very, very sure my um, small businesses, I think you're struggling with the same. Now, I want to make this as interactive as possible. Like I said, as a person, I'm really high touch. Um, I'm used to giving conferences to hundreds of people. I'm used to actually doing conferences, um, even for corporate groups or even one-to-one -one coaching. So I'm really, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a very high touch person. So if uh, it's very strange for me to be just talking to a computer like this, I know you're listening. I hope I'm clear. I know it's very strange for you to, um, you know, just uh, interact with me and just listening to me. So I don't, I don't want that. So what I want you to do is I would like you to share your biggest concerns right now at the corner, right? And uh, at the corner of your screen, if, uh, tell me your biggest concerns right now with regards to digital marketing against this pandemic. Secondly, if you have, and I'm opening the doors wide open right now. If you have any questions, uh, and you don't have to switch on your video, uh, if you have any questions right now um, about your business with regards to digital marketing and social media, please raise your hand to speak, right? And um, and just I'm just opening the floor to anyone to ask me. 
core operators own, whether or not you are a coach, whether or not you are um, a brick and mortar store, um, please raise your hand and the floor is yours. I will then collate this and I'll discuss this and I will tell you along the way so that we can make this as interactive for 20 people as possible. So I think um, I think that's um, that's really, really um, key. Yeah. Uh, um, so, 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 so uh, please be spending time um, just just typing your questions out. If you would like to speak, uh, please just, um, you know, um, uh, let me know. Raise your hand. Let me know. Uh, do you have any questions that you want to ask me? Your biggest concerns? I know there is uh, a lot of companies that have just joined us as well. Uh, if you have any concerns, um, please let me know. I'm just going to give about a minute or two. Yeah, shall we do that? A minute or two, guys, to actually just ask me, think about your questions, and then just write to me about what you feel, about what's going on. Uh, let me know. All right. Okay, all right. Uh, it seems that everyone is just um, watching and participating, so it's okay. Uh, I think uh, um, I think it takes a little, uh, um, a bit of time to get used to the tech and and to ask questions. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna answer. Uh, I'm just gonna um, reflect on Noor's question. Noor has a question. I struggle with content on social media. It is a sensitive situation, and I'm finding content to meet our business needs. Um, I'm finding it I find it difficult to uh, find content to meet our business needs, at the same time being sensitive to the current situation. So we are talking about brand messaging here. Uh, do we have any other questions uh, with regards to what's going on? Yeah, if not, let's, let's move on to our presentation. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's rock and roll. We have two hours to do this. Um, let's see what we can do, all righty. Hang on, I'm just sharing my screen. All right. Um, all right, so this is the first test. I am actually sharing my screen on uh, on Google Drive. Um, could you just let me know? Could you just let me know if you are actually seeing the same presentation, right? Uh, are you able to see the presentation um, on my screen? On my screen, and if there's if um, if, uh, if you are if you are able to see this entire presentation, please click yes on your, uh, please type yes at the corner uh, so that I know that uh, you are actually able to see the screen so that we can all um, share um, this um, uh, this presentation slides and make this as interactive as possible. Yeah, could you just let me know? Yes, thank you so much, Noor. All right, we'll continue. All right, so, um, so my name is Bella, as I mentioned, uh, I run a social media agency and one of the biggest things um, that we do and what we're known for is content strategy. I am able to actually take a look at different businesses with different industries and different platforms and able to tell them what is the best content um, to get their brands seen and heard on social media that will also inadvertently would have a huge impact to their offline presence as well. So we have been doing this for four years. Uh, prior to this, I have uh, run um, uh, other businesses as well. And I actually uh, was working as a, as a marketing uh, in marketing uh, for a fashion uh, brand uh, for a few years uh, prior. So in totality, I have about 10 years worth of marketing knowledge. Uh, and this is the first time, like I said, that I'm actually doing webinars um, and, um, and sharing my knowledge with you because I understand how you feel because I am a small business owner too. So the reason why I, I actually want to talk to you about this is because I understand the struggles that you are facing. You're not even online. You're not even maximizing the platforms that you have. So the question for all of us is what's in it for us in 2020, especially against this, um, this pandemic. So what I wanted to share with you is number one, let's try to understand first the digital marketing landscape. Um, the digital marketing landscape is one that is, um, I mean, when we think about it, it's such a vast, vast landscape, right? Um, I, um, when we talk about, when we talk about digital marketing, hi Elton, nice to see you. Yeah. Uh, all right. So when we talk about digital marketing, we are talking about multiples, uh, multiple 
and we're really talking about channels. Those who are so used to social media, uh, social media is indefinitely, um, social media is indefinitely one platform that we definitely want to thrive on because it's the easiest to grow, supposedly, it's the easiest to grow and it is, um, um, I mean, it's, what is so difficult about starting a Facebook account? Not that difficult, right? So starting on social seems easy because it's just registering for a platform. And then the problem with small business owners is that as soon as they are on social media, as soon as they have chosen a social media platform um, that they're used to, based usually based on their own personal taste, I have to say this uh, for a boomer, right uh, anyone above like you know 50s and all that they're typically on facebook because they're so used to facebook or they're at least aware of the platform um so so typically they would they would tell the entire staff or they go like all right i have to be on facebook because i myself am consuming content on facebook now um uh, for millennials right well millennials in business um they would look at instagram as a platform for professionals we look to linkedin for opportunities uh, for content creators immediately we resonate with youtube because we ourselves uh, consume content on youtube so so a lot of times when we run businesses it's all about finding that channel that we're most comfortable with. If we are comfortable with YouTube, we are on YouTube. If we are comfortable on Instagram, we are on Instagram. We are comfortable on LinkedIn. We do whatever it takes to be on LinkedIn. Now, the, while this is correct and while this is true, this is not long lasting because as soon as you find a channel, as soon as you find a channel that um, you are very, very um, comfortable with, now you start to panic. You start to panic because you realize that just because you are uh, particularly um, um, a, a, a user, an end user on Facebook, you realize that your target audience is completely not on Facebook. Or you realize that just because you consume content on YouTube, you realize that it's such a heavy platform to maintain. I mean, we're talking about editing videos over and over again um, and just producing content just on that platform and it becomes such um, a problem. So that's the thing about social media. The question is, when do you stop? When do you stop to take that introspection and really pay attention to where is my audience? Where are they hanging out? Where are they consuming this content for my particular industry? So that is um, the issue with social today. Now, for others, for others, um, uh, if you decide uh, that your digital marketing landscape is not on social, if you decide to do something like hmm, lead generation, meaning to say, what is lead generation? So I'm gonna write, I'm gonna turn my whiteboard on, all right? I'm gonna type something out, okay? As, my, as I mentioned, we have social media as a channel, and then we have, there are people who are obsessed with lead gen, all right, so let me just tell you a little bit more about what in the world is lead generation. Okay, so what has happened is uh, what has happened is that there are situations where you're on social media or uh, you're on social media and then after that you see an advertisement, typically property agents, um, they do this best. I love realtors uh, because they're so, so brilliant at their lead gen. Um, so what happened is that you see an ad advertisement about lead, uh, uh, an advertisement about a particular property and then you click on it and then you click on it and then suddenly you end up with a, a particular form to fill up your details for some reason, for some reason, you have to fill up your details if you wanted to consume or take a little bit more about, uh, about the information that they were espousing and sharing, but you have no access. You can't get to it. And this is what we mean by lead generation. I mean to say that um, if your if your channel, if your mode of uh, of your mode of attack on social media is to generate leads, so that you actually have people, as, as your 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 sales team, to actually nurture the leads, to actually close the leads, this is one channel for you too. Yeah. So lead generation is definitely one strategy that you um, that is part and parcel of the digital marketing landscape. So uh, I'm going to move on. Are we following? Uh, uh, yeah. So we talked about social media. We talk about lead gen. So um, just keep on just keep on interacting with me because um, it's quite strange to talk to a computer all by yourself. So, yeah. All right. Thanks for uh, thanks for replying, Ada, uh, uh, Vincent uh, and why. Thanks for, for doing that. All righty. So um, back to my whiteboard. So basically, as I mentioned, now that you know this lead gen, there is also this aspect called SEO. Yeah, that in, that means search 
engine optimization, optimization. All righty. All right. So what we're looking at is is a platform called um, a strategy called SEO, and a lot of people, a lot of businesses, they go like they've heard about it, they know of it, they have some semblance of what it is, but they actually don't know the technicalities or even the tools um, to actually um, execute an SEO strategy. Um, so basically, in, in essence, right, SEO is, um, the idea of SEO is basically when someone is on search, and in this case, typically, it is Google search, it is a Google search, when someone types digital marketing, the question for that person is, did Nimble come up as a top result on first page. And if I did come out as a top result on first page, then I have done my SEO right. Now, why is SEO important? And to whom it is important? To whom is it important for? Uh, there's a lot of arguments and a lot of gurus out there who talk about SEO, but if you definitely want to dive into SEO very, very much, uh, please check out, all right? Uh, please check out, um, please check out Neil Patel. Neil Patel, right? Neil Patel is, in my opinion, uh, really, really a thought leader in the space. And he does SEO the way I do SEO, or actually I do SEO, is, uh, the way I do my SEO is really inspired by Neil Patel's work. Um, and a lot, a lot has to do with content strategy. All right, content strategy. So meaning to say, uh, how we do SEO is not through the buying of keywords. Meaning to say, if I want someone to come on board into digital marketing, I try to choke or reserve the keyword digital marketing um, and then um, bank a lot of money into, it, uh, into that so that whenever, whenever uh, someone types digital marketing Singapore, you will see nimble marketing consultancy. So that, in, uh, that can cost a lot. Uh, and while it is something that can be done, if you have a lot of money, um, that's not the right way. So uh, what, what my content strategy for SEO is really in the long term, is, is really for the long term. So I'll explain to you um, a little bit more about what it takes for content um, against SEO um, that is good for the long term, all right? So if you're full, if you have any issues, uh, please, um, yes, I am typing on, uh, I am typing on the whiteboard. Are you able to see my whiteboard? Yeah, let me know if you're seeing my whiteboard, uh, yeah? Or if you can't see my whiteboard, yeah? Alrighty, okay, so um, so that's the landscape for S uh, SEO. I also have uh, something else um, 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 that I actually pushed for, and that is videos, right? Or in this case, video marketing. This is one channel that a lot of business owners can dominate and can dominate fast, which is why I wanted to talk about YouTube as well today because I think YouTube is really, really important and should be sitting on your... Um, oh, you can see it, but you can't see... Oh, hang on. Whiteboard can be seen, but nothing on the board. That's interesting. Hang on here, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Mm, that's interesting. Sorry, I thought I actually have this on my whiteboard. Okay, noted, Noor. Thank you so much. Um, I'll figure out why uh, why you're not seeing my my whiteboard. Uh, is anyone um, is anyone actually feeling the same way? Um, can you see my whiteboard? Oh, it's good now. All right, it's good now. Okay, all right, great. Okay, so. Another thing that I would love to talk to you as a small business owner, from a small business owner to a small business owner, I would like to tell you that videos are everything, really, really everything. And the reason why we, um, um, the reason why um, I needed to actually encourage you to really um, think about your videos is because this is part of an SEO strategy, right? This, this, this entire funnel of, of you creating content via videos is going to sit at the heart of everything that you do as a small business owner, right? So video marketing is everything. Um, now I'm going to type one more thing as a strategy, and that is, and that is, um, that is email marketing. I know you hate it. I know you don't want to talk about it. Uh, I know um, I know this is something that uh, not many people are, uh, are, um, are quite used to because you're going to argue against me and tell me that email marketing is not... Um, is not something that is um, that is useful today. Uh, people don't generate 
as an audience, um, uh, um, as an audience right now, and I, I understand that SMSs are really huge in Malaysia, um, and WhatsApp, and uh, as well as, um, and then followed by email marketing, uh, in terms of communicating with your audience, and I totally understand that. But what I wanted to share with everyone is that take a look, take a look at, um, try to imagine a situation where we don't have social media. We don't have um, these platforms where we can continuously interact with our audience on the fly. You need an email marketing strategy because you, this is where you can nurture your emails, uh, uh, sorry, nurture your audiences uh, who have onboarded with you as a customer or who have subscribed to you on your website. These are the people who actually are already ready, uh, ready advocates of your brand. So imagine a situation and scenario today. If you do not have social media today, is there anywhere else? Is there anywhere else can, that you can maximize and nurture your audience in any other way? Of course. That is why your WhatsApps are key. That is why your communities that you build on Telegram, they are key. That is why email marketing is everything that you need as a small business owner. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about all of these things. Like I said, I'm going to talk about SEO. I'm going to talk about social. I'm going to talk about videos. And finally, I'm going to end it off with email marketing. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm so happy um, that um, that a lot of people are joining and you guys are listening uh, attentively to what I'm saying. So let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. Um, so I'm going to stop my whiteboard. I'm going to stop my whiteboard. I'm going to turn it off. It's back to me. And I'm going to share my screen. All righty. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. All right, so let's try to understand. First and foremost, I know I have some students in my, uh, my webinar and you have seen this before. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about your customer's journey. Yeah. So what has happened is that, as you can see from this funnel, this is what we call the top of funnel. Um, and then uh, and then we have that blue little thing in the middle, and that's the middle of the funnel. And then we have that thing at the bottom that is um, obviously the bottom of the funnel. And this is my theory of how we can create a better customer journey um, with regards to um, putting them all in our digital marketing funnel. So it starts at the top. Okay, it starts here right at the top. Remember what I told you earlier that um, the way we actually gain our customers, potential customers and audience is right here um, at the awareness stage. I mentioned that, look, you can have the SEO strategy here. You can, you can find leads through SEO. You can find leads through lead gen. You can find leads on social. You can find leads even for those people who actually watch you on the video. They all will come to this funnel called the awareness stage, yeah? Now, when they are typically aware of your business, uh, when they're typically aware of the business, they've shown already some form of interest, but it is not guaranteed. It is not guaranteed that their interest will last. It's not going to guarantee them to be a paying customer, let alone a high paying customer, which is why, as you can see from the funnel, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Right now, in the middle of the funnel, it says the middle of the funnel. Um, this is where the customer moves on to having a, some form of intent. And what is intent? Typically, their intention could either be the intention could either be um, um, the intention could either be uh, wanting to buy your products, wanting to share your services. They need they are in need of your services. Um, they want to actually, uh, you know, do collaborative work with you. They have multiple intents. If you are an e-commerce business, they can buy stuff from you online. They can buy stuff from you offline. They, each and every one of your customer goes from awareness and, and then they go from awareness to what we call a consideration stage. So at this stage, at this stage where they are considering, hmm, do I go to Nimble or do I go for Google for my information? Hmm, where do I go, right? They're starting to discuss to themselves. They're, they're, they're discussing to themselves, what is the best option for me right now? Now, as you probably know, there's a lot of information out there. We are on information overload and not everyone, not everyone um, is able to make a very discerning um, decision about what they want to buy or what they want to, um, uh, what they want to try. So this is important. This is important as a small business owner. How do you make that decision where you take your customer from an awareness stage to a consideration stage where they go, hmm, I think I'm gonna, on, uh, I think I'm gonna try you as compared to your competitor. What are you doing as a small business owner to make it so, so easy for me to, uh, uh, for me to actually, um, think about 
them to pass along. Uh, these are the decisions uh, that people are making every single day. So that is why my funnel becomes really, really small. All right. So I hope that's clear. So I'm going to share my screen again. All right. Finally, there's this part where I say that the uh, customer, uh, there's a customer portion, and then there's this thing called advocacy. Now, you may or may not have heard it. I lecture this quite a bit about brand advocacy, um, and I, I want to tell a little bit more. I want to share a little bit more about why this is so important for our small business. Uh, it is so important um, to actually achieve brand advocacy uh, for our business because they help with retention. It is not a problem to get a customer. It is not. If you do ads, if you are uh, a thriving and engaging on social media, you will get a follower. You will get a customer. But these customers will not last. They will try other things. They will move on to other brands. They will try another coach. They will try another trainer. They will move on. So that is why small businesses, your job and duty is to think about a model, think about a way where you can actually build brand advocacy, Advoc advocacy in such a way that they feel they feel that they can totally resonate with your brand. They feel strongly about your brand values. They tell someone else about your brand simply because they enjoy the experience. They, you have made it so memorable for them. Right. And then they are able to actually share the, the experience with you to their children, to everyone around them. They are your they are your salesperson. So this is important. So this is important to actually um, this is important for you to actually um, think about how to move your customers to um, to uh, to ones that are uh, to ones that advocate your brand. Are we quite clear? Are we quite clear with um, the whole customer and advo uh, advocates? Do you have any questions for me uh, at this point? And if you do, just speak up. Just ask me a question. You don't have to uh, switch on your video. You can just speak up, um, and then I'll just uh, plunk you in into this webinar, and we can interact together. All right. Does anybody have a question? Are we good to move on? Okay, I'm going to move on. So here's the thing. Uh, here's the thing. When it, when it comes to when it comes to um, brand advocacy, that's the thing that I mentioned about having a long term strategy. So I'm actually going to share with you my screen again. Okay. Okay. I'm going to share my um, uh, this important important slide that I think small businesses, I think we don't really pay attention to this. I think um, maybe not at all or maybe not enough. Now, it is very important to define your target audience. Now, the way you define your target audience, it goes on multiple, on multiple, multiple um, um, categories. And I just have simply, in, in my case, just four simple, simple um, uh, categories. D uh, demographic, geographic, behavioral, psychographic. Now, what I wanted to share with you, typically, uh, what are the variables for the top two? Now, why do I say this? It's simply because uh, we typically, um, you know, we define our target audience based on a particular demographic. It's either based on their age, where they're located, their gender, even their income, even their occupation. Now, what is interesting is that some of our, some of us, we actually categorize our target audience based on um, psychographic, uh, based on the psychographic uh, uh, category, meaning to say, you know your audience. You know your audience's uh, personality. You know what are the motiv uh, the motivators that they have. You know the interests that they have. You know their hobbies. You know even their lives. Or in this case, you even know where they um, they're hanging out on social media. All of these are really, really important. If you, as a small business owner, you don't have a standard target audience, like you are not even prepared to really sit through your um, the ideal if you're not even prepared to sit through the ideal um, uh, you know, customer for you, I think we're all going to get into trouble. We really, really are. So let me just tell you a little, a little story, okay? So this is story time. So I'm really, um, this is how I, as a practitioner, tell you from the house's mouth, my experience as a marketeer, uh, as a digital marketing agency owner against 156 agencies out there in Singapore. I think there's more now. I 
Right. My business in 2016. I was a freelancer, right? I was a freelancer and um, I started, I, um, and pretty much, pretty much had no projects. Uh, pretty much was just doing very small jobs um, as compared to the people that we manage now. And as a freelancer, your issue, especially as a service provider, is that leads, leads are everything. So I did everything that I could possibly think of. I was networking. I joined um, things like BNI. I was doing things like, um, uh, networking with multiple, multiple different groups. I was doing whatever I could, um, humanely possible to be seen in the space. Now, while I was doing that for a close three months, right, um, I was not doing anything to my online presence. I just wanted to be seen. I just wanted to tell people that I exist and I, 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 I want to be seen. Now, the very first mistake that I made as a small business owner was not having a website. Yeah, and I was a digital marketer and I was just not paying attention to the digital market. I wasn't paying attention to um, my website at all because I was just, I was just concerned with leads. And I was just, was, I was just gonna like, you know, um, nurture my leads, uh, you know, do a small project here and there, but I was not, um, I wasn't really invest in have, I wasn't really invested in having my own website. So uh, that was 2016, and at that time, uh, in 2016, it was not as easy to build a website on your own right now. So what I did was I hired someone to build my very first website. I hired someone from Chennai. No joke. I'm not gonna hold. Um, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. I'm just gonna tell you as it is what happened to me in 2016, so they can learn from my mistake. So I actually built a website based off in Chennai, and uh, it was it was cheap. It was good. Um, it helped me get my first site up. Um, without any branding, okay, I had no mood board, I had no branding kit, I just wanted to now, after three months of, you know, getting some solid leads, I just wanted to just, oh, just have my website. So this is typically what small businesses are. Uh, they rush the process of having a website. We don't understand the importance of it. And, uh, and the reason why I don't understand the importance of it was because I was doing all of it by myself, solo. I was a legit solopreneur for a close one year. So, um, so because of that, um, now this has got nothing to do with my experience. I'm a very experienced marketeer. It's just that to get myself online, it was so difficult because I, I am not UI UX trained. Um, I am not a web developer. I just know, I just know how to make things look good. I just know how, I just know how to sell. Yeah. So, so then I realized that having a website, uh, was key and is everything. Now, look, you have, Today, today, you have many, many, many platforms to try. Even if you're a solopreneur, even if you can uh, build this on your own, even if you're taking your time to build your own online presence, you can do this on your own pretty much easier than, uh, than I had uh, during 2016. Now, the reason why I wanted to share with you all of these things is because I wanted to tell you why building a website four months or five months, five months down the road is difficult um is uh, uh, sorry it's not difficult um it is a problematic for seo okay so this has got something to do with seo or how google recognizes your brand all right so like i said i started a business in 2016 but i never had a website until like four to five months later so i was already building some content for myself i was doing some offline thing but i had no website so what has happened i've just wasted four months of the uh four months of being uh, of having an opportunity to actually crawl on google search meaning to say the meaning to say the longer you put off building a website and telling Google that you are on uh, that you are digitally now recognized, the be uh, um, 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 the worst off it will be for you to actually have a digital footprint for your business. Because, like I said, you may have an offline presence already. Everyone knows you offline, but this has got nothing to do with your digital footprint that is on Google, which that is the first place you need to dominate. All right, so. First things first, let's talk about website, everyone. I know it's not easy to build a website on your own. So I have some interim solutions, okay? In between, I have some interim solutions because in your mind, you wanna have a fantastic looking website that looks like Zalora, that looks like, like you know, like all the big fancy brands. You, you, you have that as a vision, but the thing is you need an interim solution where people can still check out, people can still like buy stuff from 
So like people can, um, uh, people can buy stuff from you, can check out, uh, check out the products from you, or even basically to see um, what you do, right? So I have, I have, I'm gonna go from interim solutions to the actual platforms that you can explore, all right? Is everyone good? Is everyone good? Let me know if you're good. I'm just gonna wait for some replies. Hang on, I'm just gonna see who's here. All right. Okay, right. Is everyone good? I can just say yes, all is good, uh, uh, so that I know everyone's like, so that we are interacting. Thank you. All right, all righty, let's move on, okay? So the first things first, interim solutions. Interim solutions meaning to say, if I don't have a website, if I am uh, I'm pressured with all this content that I have in my head, what can I do to just get my word out so that people can still buy from me and people can still uh, interact with me? So I'm going to share with you some tools, all right? All righty, let's start. Okay. Okay, so um, the first interim solution is I would like you to check out leadpages.com. All right, for those who are, uh, uh, for those, for those who are listening and if you are looking at a solution where you really, really just wanted leads, right? You really just want the leads. Please check out leadpages.com. Leadpages.com is basically um, a, a, a landing page builder. It is not a full-blown website. I repeat, it is not a full-blown website. It is an interim or it is. Uh, it could actually just be the only thing that you have as an online presence or as a um, as an, uh, as um, you know, before you get into the uh, before you dive into a website uh, a website creation, you could consider just having a, a a a landing page so that you can actually have um your customers continue to talk to you, continue to check you out, and leadpages.com. I'm oh, sorry, leadpages.net is one. So I'm just gonna explore with you what they uh what the, what it does. Okay, what it does. All right. This is what happens. Okay, hang on. Uh. Okay. All right. So the difference between lead pages as, uh, and uh, WordPress or Shopify and all that is because it is meant to create a high. Uh, it is meant to create um, to create urgency. I repeat, it is meant to create urgency amongst your customers. So as you can see, as you can see, the templates that they have, all right, and the categories that they actually have, right, it goes from about section to like solopreneurs, like if you're gonna have like if you're an author, if you want a checkout page, events, webinars, this, as you can see, it is not a typical WordPress or Shopify template, yeah? It is meant to create urgency. It is meant to create urgency it is meant to just choke someone, get someone on board it fast. And that is what we call building landing pages. Are we clear? Yeah. So this is, can be a good intern solution because for those students or for those, um, for those who are here today, and if you are not, uh, you know, like, um, you, you like your pressure to build an entire 10 page website, you can just focus on just building just one landing page just to make sure your orders are actually there, just to make sure that there are some products there or your services are there. One page, get the leads, nurture them, check out. That's it, all right? Now, Lead Pages is not the only tool. Lead Pages is not the only tool. There is also another platform called Unbounce, all right? Unbounce. I'm gonna share my screen one more time. There is also a, a platform called Unbounce.com. All right, so this is Lead Pages, um, you know, competitor, yeah. And the reason why I actually love Unbounce a lot is because I love their templates. Uh, their templates are really, really, uh, you know, are, are, are really, really cool. Uh, I can click on landing pages right here, and the templates. I particularly like the pop-ups. Or you can sort it by the campaign. Okay, you can sort it. Okay, let's say for example, you have some products. Okay, not that many. You don't have a hundred products, but you know, you sort of have 
that, uh, you know, like maybe five or 10 products. Uh, and then like, you know, you want to sell that one product that you think that is going to be a best seller at this stage. So you can choose any of this template. Uh, it's so easy. It's drag and drop. It's just like Wix.com. It's just like drag and drop. And pretty much uh, you got yourself like a landing page. So at least, at least, at the very least, your brand and your business is online. Now, this is not a conversation for those who are already online. I know there are a lot of you who are already on WordPress. I know a lot of you who are already on Shopify. This is a conversation because I have a myriad of people here. This is a conversation for those uh, small business owners who are not even online, all right? So that is lead pages and that is Unbounce. Now, there is another interim solution because if you can't afford Unbounce, you can't afford lead pages, there is another interim solution and that I'm going to introduce to you that is a lot cheaper or can be a free uh, freemium that you can maximize and that is, okay, All right, that is typeform.com, right? Typeform.com. Now, as I've mentioned, as I mentioned, uh, a, a lot of times people think that typeform.com is like Survey Monkey. Um, it is not just uh, it is not just for taking surveys uh, because the template is uh, really, really. Um, it has gotten better along the years. Um, you can definitely, as an interim solution to get yourself online, you can get into a type form because it is way, 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 way easier. Um, and as you can see, if you click on template, okay, you can click on template, you can click on this pop up, uh, this form that says, uh, like I said, if you're selling some stuff, you could click on order, okay? You can click on order. And there you have it. There is an order form like this. Now, don't believe me how easy it is. I'm going to pick one template. Okay, I'm going to pick one template. And we're going to preview this together. So this is how you're going to see it on a desktop. All right. This is how you're going to see this as a desktop. There is also a mobile version. And as you can see, um, you can already list the products that you have. Um, it can already choose what you, what you want to buy, what is the size. Uh, uh, you know, how many structures, whatever. And even at the end of the day, um, you know, um, you know, get the shipping code, whatever. It's really, really here, right? Okay. So, um, look, uh, I, I don't want, I don't need to tell you how easy it is, um, to actually get into a type form because it's, if you can write an email, you can do a type form. Yeah. If you can write an email, you can do a type form. But the reason why I wanted to have this conversation with you is because small businesses need an interim solution because A, they may not be happy with the current website that they have. Um, and, and therefore they will just let it die. The businesses typically let their websites die. It is not a place where they consistently nurture the website in such a way that, that like it is truly, truly a, a shop, an e-shop. Um, so this is this is a problem. This is a problem, right? Because A is either you have a website that you're, you totally forgot to nurture it, or you're not really bothered to nurture it for the sake of your SEO. Um, B, um, if you if you don't have the means, the resources, the money to buy um, a, 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 a de and develop a good website, you need to know um, uh, what are your other uh, solutions. And like I said, um, uh, Typeform is definitely one of it. Now here's the thing. Okay. Now it is easy. It is easy to actually, um, get into a type form and send a URL to your customer by either blasting this on your, to your customer's telegram, blasting it on, your, on WhatsApp, blasting this on email is easy, but here's the problem. You cannot track it. You cannot track what they have clicked. You cannot track what they have done. Um, 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 um uh, who has, um, uh, came to the, uh, to the platform, click on the URL. And that is why you need a bit Lee, all right, a bit Lee. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please, 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 please remember this. This is the most easiest thing that you can possibly do for your for your URLs moving forward. If you don't pass it to a, if you don't pass your long URL, or even if it's not a long URL, even if it's as simple as nimble.sg, which is my website, and you don't pass it through on a bit.ly, you will not know exactly if there are any clicks that are coming to that. Okay. Which is bad. You need to make sure that you.
you need to if links are being clicked and it's important to take all those URLs and put it into a bit.ly. Now, this works the same as a tiny URL, but I feel that bit.ly is really a lot better uh, than a tiny URL uh, because, um, you know, it is something that is, uh, you know, uh, is, 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 is free and is good, is a good interface. The back end interface is really, really easy for you to understand. And that's it. Yeah. So these are the interim solutions before you deep dive into a website. Yeah. These are the interim solutions. Now, what's next? What's next is let's talk about let's talk about our uh, 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 branding. OK, branding. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, all right. Now I'm gonna wrap it up um, with whatever that I mentioned with the landscape and all that. So I'll I'll, I'll talk about that. Yeah. So let's talk about branding now. Uh, I self I, I I see a lot of small business owners. Um, they they are sending emails via their own personal Gmail. They don't even know what is G Suite. They are um, they don't even it is as simple as um, just having your own domain. Um, they are not even sure how to even do that. Um, do you suffer from that? Do you feel that? Um, do you feel that that is something that you're struggling with, like not even knowing, not knowing even how to even set up your own domain and stuff like that? So I'm gonna help you out, okay? I'm gonna help you get your branding proper online, okay? So we work. Uh, number one, num uh, number one. Uh, um, if you are in Singapore, if you are in Singapore, and I know some of my listeners here are from Singapore, there is this platform called Vodian. Okay. Right. Hang on. Okay. There's this platform called Vodian, and it, and it and it is basically a platform where you can register your web hosting, your domain names. Let's say, for example, you want to call your business um, abc.com. You are able to actually find, um, you know, whether or not the availability of the abc.com right here on Vodian. Look, I understand that there's a lot of other web hosting and domains out there, but trust me when I say that, like, I've been using this for four years. I've not changed my, I've not changed my vendor. They have been incredible incredibly incredibly helpful and useful and it's true and legit when they say that they are here for you 24 7 um and honestly look i'm just i i i i, I use vodian yeah so anyway the reason why you need to understand vodian is because you will get here you will get um you will get to a situation where you need to host you need to have your own abc.com or like bella at abc.com um uh, and that is basically email uh, your email hosting it starts like that right it starts from uh, it starts from like um having your own personalized emails uh in in malaysia in malaysia i know my students some of you are from malaysia so i'm actually gonna switch on my camera i share my screen i'm gonna type uh, malaysia hosting there's a couple of vendor yeah, server free. Okay. Yeah. So for those in Malaysia, uh, from my understanding, uh, from my understanding from uh, my friends in Malaysia and my developer in Malaysia, um, he uh, they use server free. Yeah, is 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 reliable and, and is good. Um, and and like I said, these are all solutions that are cheaper than usual. So this is something that um you can definitely consider as well. All right. So are we all good? Good. Shall we move on? Alrighty. Okay. So while that is happening, while that is happening, now let me just tell you a little bit more about email signatures. It is so imperative that you have a legit email signature because it really helps with your brand architecture. It starts like that, right? The first impression, right? So if you have never heard or you are not, uh, if you don't pay attention to your email signatures, I think it's going to be eh, quite terrible, quite terrible. So you need to actually have a proper email signature. So I'm actually going to tell you where to get your email signatures and how to get it for uh, very, very cheap. Uh, for me, it is a, it is an economic uh, uh, solution. So I want to share with you uh, one more tool called HTML SIG. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to HTML SIG. 
all right html sig allows you to have at the bottom of the footer of your uh, of your um you know of your of your emails right you can actually promote yourself in such a way where each and every one of these social media icons are tracked one of the biggest things about HTML SIG is that uh, it allows me to have and, and basically put all of these social icons. Look, if I am on WhatsApp, if I am on Facebook, if I have a Skype account, if I am on Twitter, I can, if I am on YouTube, I can have all of this attached to my, um, uh, to my, uh, email signature. Now, it is so simple to set up. It is so simple to set up. Um, and there's also all of this, um, like, uh, like I said, this generator that you can actually do. In fact, you can actually do it here, actually. Uh, hang on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me see if you can actually. Oh, yeah. You got to sign in. You got to sign in. Yeah, there, 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 there. There. Try a free SIM email signature or sign up for more options. So you can just type, you know, Bella and then, uh, and then like your job title, marketing director. So you build it. You can build it, but because um, this is not for um, this is um, it's not free. What will what will happen is that you will see a HTML SIG watermark. Now, if you're okay with that, that's perfectly fine. But what I really like is this social platform. Look, I could literally just click all of this and put it and dump it. Um, Twitter.com slash nimble sg and voila. There you have it. I've tweeted right there. Look, um, this is really, really key because I know a lot of, of you don't really pay attention to your email signatures. In fact, um, you actually create it on Microsoft Word uh, and copy and paste it and put it into your uh, Google or you put it into like your uh, um, you know, whatever emails provider you have. And, and sometimes they're not clickable. Right. So one of the things that I want to encourage you to do is I want you to I want to get you on board on HTML SIG because it is as low as five dollars. I repeat, it is only five USD for unlimited signatures across multiple businesses. So you could actually share this with any of your partners. You could share this with any other female founder or whatever. You can share the account because you can create multiple, multiple, multiple signatures uh, and, it's, uh, and it's really, really, really good for you, all right? So that is uh, email signatures and that is something that I really want you to pay attention to. And like I said, one thing about HTML SIG that I really love is the fact that I can know if a particular button is being clicked. If there are a lot, if I, and you can create banners, for example, if you wanted to promote your latest products, your latest blog article, blah, 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 uh, you can put it right at the bottom. Um, that is something that, uh, that is, I think is a big win for HTML as I, uh, as, uh, SG. I hope it's clear. All good, everyone. Okay. Mm. Okay. All righty. Um, so do you have any questions or do you have any questions for, uh, for me at this point? Is everyone clear? I'm just going to wait. Uh, and if there's any questions at this point about anything, uh, please, you can join in into the webinar. This is the perfect time to really ask me anything. Uh, uh, and then after that, I can share uh, your concerns with a lot more uh, people right here. All you have to do is just speak up. Yeah, there is a corner at the bottom. Just uh, click on speak and I can join in. And then after that, we can, uh, you know, we can interact together. Let me know. All good. Let's see who's here. Nice. Okay. All right. Okay. Everyone's good. Okay. I'm going to move on. Yeah. I'm going to move on. If you're thinking about a question or if you have um, some concerns concerns that you don't want to share now, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, but I definitely will open a Q&A section um, uh, later on. So I just wanted, wanted to let you know that it is a lot better if it's interactive so that we can all benefit from each other. Okay? All righty. Let's move on. Okay. All right. So I mentioned this before, uh, I mentioned this before, and what we want to do is I wanted to tell you about like how it is, how important it is to actually uh, move on, uh, move from being a good brand to a great, great brand. 
right? Um, as you can see from the site, from this slide, from this particular slide, you can see that like what makes us a great brand, even Nimble, right? Even Nimble as a brand, uh, we aspire to consistently be great at what we do, and that is because of the things that I mentioned here. We will every we align every single content strategy. Uh, we produce content that is relevant. Uh, we we involve our customers in their content uh, in the, uh, in our content planning and creation. Meaning to say, we legitly um, you know listen to what the audiences are really really craving as content, and then we produce the kind of videos that they want to hear, the kind of content uh, articles that they want to see, um, and 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 that is something that Mimble does uh, very very well. We think, and like I said, this is important. Okay, we think. And it's important to think like a television network. And what I mean by this is that you need to have, you need to think of a business, right? Your small business. Now, I know sometimes most of us are like either freelancers or solo. But what you have to do is you need to give a little bit of personality to your business and your brand. If your brand can be, um, if your brand, if you could name, uh, if you can have a keyword to actually describe your brand, right? Uh, or an adjective to describe your brand or a word to describe your brand, what will it be? what would you call yourself um like for example nimble is for example is a passionate brand right or nimble is a dynamic brand and you can work from there you can work from those adjectives because it is from it is recognizing that brand personality that is going to set the tone the, your trajectory, how you're going to speak to your audience, what you're going to create for your audience on the on this platform. So this is all um, uh, really, really important. It all boils down to what makes a great brand. It's all about understanding yourself um, um, uh, in the business, understanding the landscape, understanding your audience. And it starts with, number one, understanding what you're really, uh, really, really good at. So in this case, if you could think of a, uh, if you could think of a, uh, of a keyword to describe your brand, uh, your your uh, your business, what would yeah? So that's something to consider. Uh, that is something to consider. So I'm gonna move on. Okay. So um, at the at the end of the day, uh, I did mention here that great brands maximize every piece of content, and this is key, as you can see from uh, Nimble's uh, Insta, Insta Instagram. I'm just gonna share with you Nimble's Instagram, just to prove a point. All right, this was a video that we did. Um, this was a video that we did a long, long time ago. I mean, like on YouTube, this is like listed like three years ago, but till today, till today. This just garnered like 575 views because I actually bothered to bring it back out and share with everyone what was, um, uh, what was content that was, is that to me is still relevant. And today, uh, it has gotten 500, uh, almost 500 views. So the thing about building a content strategy is to learn how to maximize that content strategy. For example, this particular video, this video is not from us. It is not it's not it's not something that we created this is something that entrepreneurs uh, entrepreneurs inside my created and we actually repurposed it and put it onto our platform we maximize someone else's content onto our, uh, our our platform and that is that is still relevant it is still relevant content so learning how to maximize content as a small business owner is very important so i'm gonna repeat this you took some photos, okay? You took some photos of the product, right? You took some photos of your product and then after that, it just sits in the repository in your Dropbox and you don't maximize that. You don't use it in your campaigns. You don't use it in your brochure. You don't use it in your social media posts. It just sits there um, in the Dropbox uh, for it to rot, right? Um, and that is me saying you not maximizing every piece of content because that is what we call a visual content. That is visual content. So another 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 case scenario. Yeah? You actually did a video a long time ago. You did a video. You did a you did um, you know like a, a tutorial. You made something, uh, and then you realize that today you are you you are um, you are perfectly aware of how to edit your video a lot better. You know how to put soundtrack. You know how to put subtitles and stuff like that. So what you've done is that you actually uh, you again you left it to dust. You left it to dust and today you don't, I mean like the fact that you don't even bother to actually improve on the current content that you have, that is you again not maximizing the content, video content in this case. The last and final case study is for example, if you were to write an article, say you wrote a blog, say you wrote an article for maybe like maybe two years ago and today in, in this case scenario, right? Um, 
you realize that like that blog article still had relevance. That blog article could actually still be relevant in today's context. So what has happened is that uh, again, you let it sit in on your WordPress, on your LinkedIn, and you don't bother about it. You don't bother, you don't take care of it. Again, it's gonna collect digital dust. And because you didn't bother to update it with like fresh new links, um, update it with fresh new uh, pictures, update it with like, um, you know, like uh, a different perspective in today's perspective, in today's context. Once again, you did not maximize that content. So maximizing content is very key because what is being done years ago can actually be relevant to today. So please, please, small business owners or business owners, please think about all the old content that you have. Think about it. Think about all the old content that you've made. Think about it. Is there any way or any chance that I can actually bring it out to the open, to social, for you to share in ways that are like different, in ways that are a lot better now, something that can be maximized. That is you being a great brand. Okay, that is you being a great, great brand. So that is something that I wanted to share because I don't want you to waste time creating new content if you already have old content that can actually be relevant. So just uh, make sure, just make sure that you actually, um, you know, uh, 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 think about think about what I just said. Just make sure you think about what I said and see if you can actually improve on all or um, all existing content that you may have. All right. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. We have to move on. All right, so now here's the tough part, content and social strategy. What does it mean? So content marketing is basically a strategic marketing and a business process. I call it a business process, yeah? Um, extremely focused on creating and distributing value, relevancy, and consistency, or in this case, consistent content. As I mentioned, who are you producing this content for? Okay, because as I mentioned earlier, different content would be is needed for different stages of your business. It could be top of the funnel. What is the kind of top of funnel content? What is the content that is that is suited for um, uh, to help someone make that decision? What is the content that will deliver brand advocacy? Every single stage in the funnel deserves a different type of content. I'm gonna repeat. Okay, I'm gonna repeat. Every single different stage of the funnel deserves a different kind of content. Content for awareness is different from content for uh, consideration stage. Content, content for consideration stage is very, very different from content for uh, 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 conversion stage, right? Because if you wanted to convert someone, if you wanted to get someone to buy your stuff from you, you will put a value to it. You tell that person that, hey, this is 990 and it's only 990 today. You will create urgency. You will create a culture of FOMO, right? The fear of missing out. You will create that kind of urgent uh, copy or uh, urgent content because you want conversion. So this is very, very important. So like I said, different fun, um, the different stages of the funnel, um, you need to actually think of a different kind of content. All right, even at a level of advocacy, even at the level of advocacy. All right, so let me see. I'm going to share my screen again. We're going to go straight to it. All right, if this is the first time, if this is the first time that you're, you're, you are paying attention to HubSpot, uh, let me just tell you that HubSpot is, is sits at the heart of everything that I do here at Nimble Marketing. Uh, HubSpot, I'm HubSpot trained, I am uh, and certified, you know, uh, I understand inbound marketing uh, really, really well. And I just wanted to share with you what this, um, why HubSpot is definitely a place for you to start as a small business owner where you can actually uh, learn uh, uh, inbound marketing from. So to begin, you know, to begin to, be, be, to begin to understand what is inbound marketing, let me just tell you and pull this out, all right? Okay, I hope you're following. I hope you're following. All righty. Okay, so there are two kinds of... Um, there are two kinds of uh, strategy when we when it comes to uh, creating presence, online presence, offline presence, or awareness of your brand. Typically, 
everyone, uh, typically most brands, starts off um, uh, doing an outbound strategy. Meaning to say, all we do is just sell, sell, sell to our audience. We don't really care about what they say. Uh, we don't really care about what they want, what they need. Um, so as a, as a job of, 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 of marketing back way back then, it's all about, um, uh, it's all about selling directly to a, uh, a customer. So this, uh, in fact, what has happened is that it interrupts our audience. It doesn't nurture our audience. Um, it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't build advocacy because, you know, it's all about marketing directly to my face. So that is going to, that's, that's going to, that's quite, that's quite, that's not quite the right strategy to think about your marketing today. Uh, and therefore, when HubSpot, you know, institutionalized the whole concept of inbound marketing, I was really, really happy because um, it resonates with me as a marketeer. And me as a marketeer, me as a marketeer, I'm more towards like, um, I'm more towards nurturing, storytelling, creating, um, you know, a relationship with my, my clients and my audience. And that's really, really important. So at the heart of what I do as a marketer is really storytelling. So I, I much prefer the inbound route. And while the inbound route uh, sounds like it's such a long um, process, it's so difficult or like uh, it takes, it, you, there's, this, um, con, there's this misconception that you have to be a good writer to be an inbound marketer. It is not true. You don't have to necessarily be a good writer. You just have to understand how to attract people with your stories, all right? So that's the thing. Um, storytelling is everything about uh, inbound marketing. So I'm going to share with you a few tools, uh, business owners, uh, because this is important. It helped me in 2016 and till today it has helped me throughout, okay? So I'm going to show you i'm going to show you a few tools okay one okay so this is hubspot and hubspot has this platform called resources Please, please, please. There are a lot of uh, free courses that they have. Uh, I mean, like you, you can totally click on this and 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 be certified yourself. Be certified yourself uh, and see, uh, uh, you know, what kind of topics, what kind of topics you can actually, um, you know, take a look at. Um, so that's a lot of them uh, is, is right here, even at the level of lead gen. So it's not that. Inbound marketing doesn't require advertisement. It means that the storytelling on advertisement is just a lot better and a lot heightened. Okay, a lot heightened. So don't 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 confuse yourself with the fact that uh, Bella said inbound marketing is no ads. It is not true. Inbound marketing does include advertisement, but it is on a premise that it is all about your storytelling and the way you do your storytelling is in a way that is so, so, um, you know, attractive. Think about Grab. Think about Petronas. Think about all the big brands who invest a lot in videos. Every time, every time Hari Raya comes or any big season, um, you know, holiday comes, you see big brands showing really fantastic holiday, um, you know, videos and stuff like that. That is inbound. That is inbound, right? Um, and then, uh, and then when you see that that ad, when you watch that Patronas ad, or when you watch that Grab ad, and you see that 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 little button that says uh, uh, "Find out more," when you click on it, that is part of lead gen. So it is always an integrative solution. It is an integrated, um, you know, strategy. It's not that inbound marketing does. It doesn't mean that you don't do ads. It's just that uh, inbound marketing is all about storytelling. How do you attract someone? Pool marketing rather than push marketing. Yeah. So let me just break it down to you why um, this is really important because outbound marketing is not a concept that is new. It's not a concept that is new. Every day. Every day as a consumer, you are bombarded. You are bombarded by outbound marketing. We, we drive and we see a billboard in Malaysia. There's a lot of billboards out there. So when we drive, we see a lot of billboards. Uh, when we drive, um, you know, and we see a lot of uh, ads on a bus station. Uh, uh, and these are, uh, these are um, uh, you know, advertisements that I mentioned before, and I'll say it again, they're all in your face. You don't need it, but because you see it, right um, because you see you are aware about the brand for just a millisecond and then you're off 
and you just you're just driving past and that's it right it doesn't connect with you it doesn't do anything it doesn't it doesn't even compel you to pick up your phone to go and save that number it doesn't do anything right so the thing about the the the, the, the brands who are, who can afford billboards who can afford all the ads on the uh, on the bus stops and all that kind of thing um it is like i said it's about uh, it, it is as i mentioned the wallace game i'm gonna share my screen again i'm gonna share with you and say look 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 i mentioned here it's all about that wallet's game that means the bigger the wallet the bigger the wallet the better your ad the bigger the ad the bigger the location because you can afford it because you genuinely can afford it but as a small business owner like you and me we cannot afford forty thousand dollars a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to be pumped into the stations or the mrt stations we cannot afford all of these things because we don't have that capacity we don't have that capacity so we need to re-strategize business owners we need to re-strategize you need to think of advertisement yes but you need to do it in such a way that it is not destructive, that it is not gonna come, uh, it's not gonna repel your audience. In fact, you're supposed to think of advertisements where it will actually, you know, um, uh, pull your audience towards your brand rather than repel them because your ad is just so repulsive. You know, so that's the thing that I wanted to share with you because um, in my teaching, in my course, um, in my, um, you know, I teach. Um, I teach my coaching my coaching students exactly this how to create advertisement ad creatives ad creatives that are so compelling on even it, it can be done even on a mobile phone it can be done even on a mobile phone and it can still result in huge impressions huge um you know um you know uh not not just impressions reach um and even a lot of click throughs so it's all about storyboarding right it's all about the storytelling that i mentioned so are we clear? Are we clear so far, students? Are we are we clear, you guys? I hope I, I hope that you guys are um uh are, are still there. <laughs> I is so it's it's continue because usually, like I said, I'm very high touch. I see a lot of people, so I'm just gonna like wait um till, till someone says yes, I'm still here. I'm just gonna, you know, are you guys still there? Could you just comment and say that you know you guys are still around? Thank you, thank you. All right, okay. Thanks, Noor, uh, uh, for replying. Okay, so that's the thing. That's the thing that I mentioned before. So, uh, so I'm gonna move on to my slide. I'm gonna move on. Okay. So, what does it mean? What does it mean for a small business owner? Is is an uh, the question for us as a as a small business owner? Do we categorize our audience as well as our tar target audience separately? Okay, what I mean by this is typically a target audience is meant for sales and meant for business. But this, when it comes to inbound strategy, you need to think of your audience as a more generic generic audience that may or may not buy your product. I repeat, yeah, I repeat. Okay, an audience, an audience on social is completely different from an audience, a target audience that is supposed to buy your product. Okay, so like I said, the conundrum for us small business owners is: do we actually grow? Um, do we actually grow an audience, and then from there, hopefully, some of them would actually become a customer, or do we make a uh, do we make an audience out of our customer? This is always the question I always get in class. Like this is always the question that I actually get from my my students. Like, look, Bella, I have five hundred customers, but I got no audience on social media. Like, I have zero presence online, but I have 500 customers hmm that's 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 like um quite the um conundrum right because can the your customers may they are not necessarily ones who would actually bother about the values that you want to share as a brand the customers are your one-offs they come they go they look at a cup right they look at the cup and they, they look they, they look at it they assess it they go like hey this is a good product it's five bucks and then they walk off like I said in my class many, many times, it is not a problem to find a one-off customer, which is why your strategy as a small business owner is how do we retain the customers? How do we tell them to move on from being in our funnel as a customer and moving forward, moving downwards as a brand advocate? 
as a brand advocate. So that's the thing I wanted to share with everyone that it is so important that you, you as a business owner, just have a little bit of introspection. It is very important to think about to segment your audience according to, all right, these are the people that were what my fault. These are my followers, right? But they are not interacting with me. They are hardly commenting on the things that I post on social. They are not even sharing my post. They are not even questioning what I do. They're not interacting with me at all. That is a problem. And that is your job and duty as a social media marketer. And that is your job and duty as a business owner to enforce interaction on social because they are the ones this audience they are the ones who are actually going to care enough about your brand values what you have to say what you have to sell so customers will come you do an ad they come you you promote it at a uh, you promote it at, a, at, at an event you promote it at a flea market they will come you have a brick and mortar store customers will come but we are referring to the audience that you build on social, the digital audience, the online audience that you must, must nurture and you must build from scratch. And that is something that you need to understand why it is so important to go from customer to audience, an audience that really pays attention to your brand. Okay. All righty. So that is, um, that is, um, that is what I, 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 I'm really hopeful that a lot of business owners, I hope you get, I hope you spread this message around. I hope you spread this message. I hope you tell your staff. I hope you share this downwards or even, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, to the, to the, to our entire team. Um, and because it's so important for you to segment, segment your customers from the online audience that I want you to nurture and I want you to build a relationship with. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. So moving on. Right. Look, I, I have this entire deck um, that was um, that is um, that I've given to you, right? I've given to you. And for those students who are new, you've never seen this before, uh, or for those who have seen this before, let's revisit it. Let's revisit this again, right? Your duty in business is to think tra digital right? You're supposed to think of a blog. You're supposed to think about your social strategy. You're supposed to think mobile first. Everything you do has to be everything that you do on social, everything that you do on digital is all the base. always have to be mobile first approach. It has to be a mobile first approach. When I, when I onboard a, a, a product, when I do a copy, is, is a copy way too long? Are people going to be bored while they, when they read this on, on my, my, on the phone, it has to come with a mobile first approach. Whether or not it's visuals, whether or not it's copy, whether or not it's video, everything has to be mobile first because that is how we're going to consume content on digitally. They're all on mobile, all right, all on mobile. So that's the thing that is important. All right. And I've mentioned this before and I'll mention this again. This is a this is a typical customer journey map. I would like you to go through all of this. Okay, go through all of this. And then I'm going to talk about retention. Okay, let's talk about retention. Let's let's discuss retention. All right, retention. As a small business owner, have you ever really considered your retention rate amongst your customers? Is this something that you bother? Is this something that you actually put um, uh, uh, efforts in? Have you ever thought about how many people actually came back to try your business or try your services and products? If you never, if you don't even have a simple master copy if you don't even have a simple excel spreadsheet to really document your customer's journey in today's context is called crm right um if you don't even have a simple excel spreadsheet to to, to basically document what your customers buy what your customers bought um and and that is not being um that is not the best practice of a of a small business owner or a business owner to begin with okay now let me tell you a story let me tell you a story okay I work with a uh, a business uh, in in um, in Singapore who has had uh, I would say maybe eighteen years of practice in this particular industry one eight one eight eight. 18 years. The, uh, it is a wedding business. It's a wedding business. It's a wedding industry. And then when I asked a very simple question, I asked like, hey, um, do you have a database? Like a simple database about like your customers and what they bought or what they tried and all that. And they were like, yeah, we do our receipts. 
is legit all the all she said or all he said also was yeah my customers are all based on receipts that means the invoices that they actually um um that she um that they actually have right now this is bad this is bad if you are if you only have your database if your database on your customers is only based on a receipt that is not a good practice guys that is not a good practice what you have to do is you need to segment them in some form of a crm right a crm and on hubspot i'm going to share with you i'm going to share with you this tool There you go. This is just one tool, okay? Just one tool, right? So this is uh, this is basically a CRM model uh, that allows you to put all your customers, like all your customers, into a platform that they have, like a dashboard or something, and then put in all the customers' details, the customers' number, the customers' emails, and what they bought all in one dashboard. Now, if a HubSpot CRM is very difficult as a learning curve for you to think about, um, for you to try, for you to even try, um, then may I suggest that you go through the last two years, not so far back, just two years of homeworks worth, okay? Just two years worth of your database and put all your uh, customers in a Google Sheet, in a Google Excel or a, a, in a Microsoft Excel and put them according and segment them according to name, email address, uh, um, name, email address, um, telephone number, as well as what they've bought what they have actually bought that is important all right so this is why is this important it is because what i want to tell you is how to actually learn learn how to retain those customers that are high paying customers i repeat it is important that you strategize a, 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 a method where you can actually keep your high paying customers and retain them why is this important Remember how, like, um, remember, like, when the, the the difference between buying a Toyota and buying a Mercedes Benz. Okay, when you buy a Mercedes Benz, okay, you walk into the showroom, you are definitely, definitely treated like a king, right? You walk in, there is there are people in, like, you know, like the sales the salesperson are like in ties. They ask you if you're eaten. They ask you if you have like um, you know, like uh, done all of them. Like they, they, uh, like you, if you, if you, if you've eaten or whatever, and then they actually try to actually, um, you know, uh, treat you so so nicely. It is really a Mercedes Benz experience, right? So that is the thing. If you had an experience with one customer, uh, and and, and the experience was gold, and you come back to them two years later, a year later, three months later, and just check in on these people who had such a good experience with you, and just tell them, hey. By the way, we have a new offer about this um, this product that we sell or this new thing that we item that we have in store. There is a high percentage. There's a high chance, very very high chance, they would actually say yes. Why? Because the experience with you was just so magical, it was just so amazing. So it was definitely okay for them to actually just go like two months down the road and go like, yeah, why not? I'll just sign up for this thing. So that's the thing learning how to retain high paying customers and really treating them that is why we have things like loyalty program that is why nimble girls and i we're always thinking of like how do you retain and and build loyalty amongst our clients and our audience it's not just about honoring them on their birthdays oh my god please stop okay the last thing you do i mean like i know as a start it's so easy to just you know um, do a birthday loyalty program but it is too small um, it is too small a strategy. It is too small a strategy to just give them a discount. Why are we giving discounts? We shouldn't be just giving discounts to uh, to people who are already advocating our brand. We shouldn't do that. I don't think as a marketer, I will go for that. So the thing about retaining our customers is all about the value. It's all about understanding the customer's journey. It's all about understanding what they've bought because what they've bought and what they've tried is already, is already made into a part of their lifestyle. If you can master the art 
as a small business owner, if you can master the art of understanding your customer's lifestyle and make content around that, make loyalty programs around that, you are able to retain these high paying clients and high paying customers. And you don't have to worry about pushing a lot of firepower to actually, um, you know, um, you know, try to market to a brand new market and try that all over again. Do you know what I mean? So this is important. Learning how to retain your customers is important, which is why that section that I showed you earlier, which is why this portion here, all right, this portion here leads to video testimonials, leads to Facebook uh, or LinkedIn groups, leads to service add-ons. It's all about value. It's all about value. So as a small business owner, what kind of value do you uh, can you actually give your audience at the or your or your customers in this case at the end of the day? So very very important, yeah. Alrighty. So let's talk about how to measure social media success right and let's talk about vanity matrix uh and and the idea of the followers let's talk about the shares and let's talk about this in a very uh, intimate manner because i've i've lectured on this before uh, many 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 times but because it's a small group there's just a few of you i just wanted to let you in on a little secret right um because it's such an intimate uh, intimate group uh, i wanted to share with you the reality of um the, the shares these followers the likes and all that um i have I have a lot of clients who are still um, very, very, very into the whole idea of um, having a lot of followers. They are like really obsessed. Like to them, getting like 5,000 followers is a lot, lot better than getting $5,000 worth of sales. And this is coming from a perspective as an agency where we are like consultants who listen to these issues every single day. Okay. It is no different. It is no different. A big brand and a small business owner or a medium enterprise, it is no different. Everyone is, um, is obsessed with the whole follower count. Everyone is. Why? Because it helps us with our ego. It helps us with like our legitimacy. It helps us with social proofing. If you have a thousand followers or if you have a thousand likes, um, you know, it, it just makes you feel better. Now, this legit has to stop. It has to stop because in 2020, especially this whole damn pandemic, right? Um, you need to think of ways that are really money making. You have to think of ways that are uh, that are uh, that wh whatever content you push out is not about just pushing out a piece of content for the sake of pushing out content, but it's supposed to actually educate, give value, and in turn, in turn, the ROI is real, real advocacy for your brand. I cannot emphasize this enough. I will, I, 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 and I will not stop um, I'm talking about this passionately because building brand advocates is really going to be everything that uh, is going to save your business at the end of the day. I'm not kidding. Yeah. So, um, so this is important. So while I, uh, as, as I was saying, as I was saying, um, about these these brands who uh, who are so obsessed with their follower count, this is the downside. Some of them, some of them did buy uh, followers, and you might get there. I don't know. I'm not too sure how many people out there are buying followers still. Uh, but and then by the time they called Nimble to to their rescue, right? I have to actually uh, clean this up. I have to clean up the mess that they've built, which is like, how do I segment real engagement from fake followers? is very very difficult it's very difficult to actually um uh, separate the two so one of the biggest tool that i actually um uh, uh, uh that i actually uh, use is number one we use a, a, a we use a follower cleaner kit all right so on the app store your keywords on the app store is i'm gonna write this down clean social list okay all right this should give you this should give you a very um you know like a a, a, a a lot of apps because android and iphone users you guys are like a lot of you are different like um users so like basically if you go if you type these keywords clean social list or clean followers clean followers uh clean clean up 
followers, you will see a lot of these tools that will allow you to actually segment those who are actually interacting with you and those who are not interacting with you. Now, this is very important because I know some of you are on Facebook and you need to clean up your list and there is just no way um, that you're going to un 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 uncheck everyone and, uh, and remove them from your, uh, from your account. But while you can do it manually, you can actually um, uh, do, do this with an app on Instagram. Unfortunately, on Facebook, you got to clean up those lists. Uh, you got to clean them up manually. All right. So please, please pay attention to this. First and foremost, clean up your list. Once you start from fresh, assuming that April, uh, uh, and I, I plan to actually have more webinars actually, um, assuming in April, you get like a brand new list. Well, in this case, uh, lit, uh, not that many followers. Do you have made some little changes to your social and you actually have like um, a lot lesser followers? This is good. This is good. Don't worry. Don't worry about like um, having like a hundred followers or 500 or 200 or even 2000 followers. This is good. At least you've gotten rid of the issue. And that was the around yeah you want i hope you stick around i know uh, i have about 18 more minutes with you guys so stick around this is the last part to the in the webinar that is so so crucial um and i wanted to share with you a few more tricks okay so learning how to actually clean up your list helps with your algorithm all right i'm not kidding helps with like you know uh, uh making sure that you are legit helps to make sure that like you did uh, uh helps with your social proofing now you whenever any content strategy that you push out and you put out is actually going to help you with your uh your social media rather than going against you so this is good getting rid of all those rubbish followers is important so let's start with that today all right so um the next thing that i wanted i wanted to share with you is that once the clean the list is clean and your social is clean i would love to introduce to you um a, 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 a channel that i think you need to start to own okay you need to start to own i'm gonna talk about youtube now all right are we ready we're gonna talk about youtube all righty mm. Okay, anyone's, everyone good? Everyone good? Okay, so I'm going to talk about YouTube. All right, ladies and gentlemen, going on YouTube, going on youtube is not an issue everyone and everyone can actually just create a youtube account and just dump videos in there and that's it it's youtube marketing it is not okay it is not that's not how you market on youtube but i have to say this i have to say small businesses i know we are so obsessed with social media but you need to think of like another platform that you can really own. And in this case, you're going to tell Google, you're going to tell Google that you are actually online and you have a presence and you're building a digital footprint and it starts on YouTube. Okay. So building a presence on YouTube is very important. So as you can see here, uh, I'm going to share with you my screen. Okay. As you can see here, I want to share with you my screen. Okay. So these are all the listed videos that I have, right? Now, this was after I cleaned up my videos and I know I have like 48 full, um, you know, views and whatever not. That doesn't really matter at this point. It doesn't really matter, okay? What matters is that the fact of the matter is that I have actually exhausted content on YouTube. I have optimized my channel. I have created YouTube cover art that is recognizable, is very YouTube-ish, is very, very for an audience that is, um, that is, um, that loves to consume content that is long form. Um, and I think this is, this is definitely one way for you to crack it as a brand on social media. So T, oh, sorry, on, on, on online, online, on digital. Yeah. So the thing is, right. The thing is, um, uh, hang on, I have about 15 minutes before the event automatically ends. So I'm actually going to uh, wrap up, okay, wrap up. Um, and then after that, we're going to uh, save some time for Q&A, all right? Now, the thing about YouTube as a strategy, typically, all of us, we need one branded video of our, our business. We need one brand video. That video entails a few things, okay? 
who you are, what you do, what your services entail. It is no different from Nike who has a brand video. It is no different from big brands who have branded video. I need you to create one branded video of yourself. All right. Now, why is this important? This is important because this is important because YouTube and Google, they are best friends. The way you crawl on Google is because you have actual content on YouTube. You're using and maximizing YouTube as a platform and you're telling Google that, hey, look, I am on YouTube, too. So this is important. So please, please. Go on and create your, um, 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 you know, like your branded video. And I'll talk about that in my future webinars and stuff like that. So I'm just saying the importance of being on YouTube. Yeah. Now, another tool that I really want to share with you is TubeBuddy. All right. TubeBuddy, ladies and gents. Okay. Okay, TubeBuddy is basically a widget, right? It's a browser extension. Can you see that? It's a free browser extension that integrates directly with your YouTube to help you run your channel with ease. Okay, I know they say all of that, but here's the best part. It is also uh, uh, able to actually help you find high-performing, searchable video topics and then craft the perfect titles and tags. It's so easy. If you, are, if you are a business owner who runs a product business or a service uh, provider, you need to see what others are doing on YouTube and base content on those on those topics and try to do this individually um, uh, in your own way but TubeBuddy basically searches it's like, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a keyword search tool on YouTube where they can find viral content and then you can mimic uh, uh, mimic them in the same way. All right. So TubeBuddy, YouTube, I think small business owners, even if you don't have a, uh, even if you don't have a website, even if you don't have a website, I think it's time for you to think about your video marketing. And I think you need to be on YouTube and I think you need to create videos for YouTube. Now, this is not a lesson about storyboarding and how to create YouTube and all that kind of thing. I mean, like um, I, I teach that in class, um, uh, in my coaching class. So that is not something that uh, I, 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 I can explain to you in 10 minutes, but that is something that I do uh, actually a lot in my coaching class. All right. So in summary, in summary, that is how we're going to get ourselves all online. That is how we're going to talk about, um, you know, um, 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 the content that we have. And this is how I'm going to summarize everything. Um, we're going to talk about tools, right? I have, I, I have at the bottom of my slides all these tools that I actually mentioned. But I just wanted to share with you that uh, uh, businesses, we have to have a business goal. All of us typically have a sales goal, a business goal. And then we need to also think about our social goals. Now they work is they they work um they work in tandem, right? A business goal and a social goal has to work in tandem. If you wanted to make $500 sales um, in a month, what kind of content do you put out to actually get that $500 sale? So this is the part where I'm going to tell you how to create contagious content uh, during this uh, period of uh, pandemic, yeah? Because I struggle with trying to fix this, uh, figure this out with my, with my clients too. Are we all okay? Yeah, we are all okay, yeah? All right. So in this stage, right, in this stage where this pandemic is uh, hurting all of us in our business as well as um, in our workflow, um, uh, uh, of course, of course, it is not as easy to actually promote anything right now. So my advice is, my advice is, believe it or not, tone down, tone down. It is not the right time to acquire new clients. I know, I know, I know it's a very, very... Um, uh, extreme, extreme uh, suggestion. I'm not asking you to not promote at all. I'm asking you to tone the whole sales pitch a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit more extreme because, uh, uh, because it is a situation where no one is actually going to buy from you. No one. So how do we fight this? How do we fight this whole thing where, look, I need to sell something better, um, but, uh, and I need to survive. I need, I, I'm strapped with my cash flow. So I'm going to teach you how to actually create uh, content. Okay. Now for those who have registered, I'm going to send you all the notes and all of those things that are, um, you know, how to create content for uh, business, uh, for uh, services, for, for, for a product business owners. So I'm going to send you all of that because I have all your emails, but, um, 
if this is my last 10 minutes to talk to you about brand messaging, I'm going to make it very, very clear. In a, in a situation right now where it's not so difficult, it is very difficult, sorry, it's very difficult to actually um, create content so that someone is actually going to buy from us. I have suggested that, yes, tone it down, okay? Now, I need you as a brand, I need you as a brand to be empathetic I need you to, as a brand, to be empathetic to the situation around you. I need you to be empathetic as a brand. I need you to do a lot more social listening. You cannot possibly be tone deaf with the, with the thing that is going on right now. So even as simple as changing your brand messaging up to just celebrate the workers, the healthcare frontliners, to just you know tell everyone that we're in this together, this is important at this stage. Very, very key. We want to know your stand as a brand. I want to know that your stand as a brand about how you have a role to play in this whole, whole big situation. So becoming and turning yourself to being more empathetic is really the right strategy to go. So may I advise you again, your tone of voice, your the, the way you brand message, your visuals, right? How you even appear on video. It is important that you actually do more social listening and empathy, put empathy across in everything that you do right um secondly the realistic the reality of like what if my business is completely in shambles right now and uh how do i pick it back up now i i know i i've uh, i mean this two hours has been about that it has been about like trying to get ourselves online and trying to find interim solutions in between and things like that but i do have to say that like it's definitely not enough uh, to go through my two hour webinars. What I have planned for is that I've planned to do smaller webinars, um, smaller, shorter webinars where I, I talk about SEO in depth. I talk about like, you know, um, you know, content far more in depth. But I want to know in your opinion, just put on your, you know, like your commentary and I have about seven minutes. What do you think of this? Would you like more webinars specifically? for each topic and each channel that I have uh, mentioned earlier in, uh, in earlier in my webinar. Could you just say yes or no so that I know what, what you feel about this whole, uh, this whole thing, consuming content for me? Maybe it takes time to load up, I'm not sure. Or maybe everyone is quite shy, I'm also not sure. <laughs> Ah, fair Fahira, yay. All right, people are asking me for like, uh, yeah, people are saying yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. So I think everyone's saying yes. Um, that's good. All right, that's good. Um, all right, so um, if if that is the case, uh, I and my my hunch is right. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be segmented for sure, <laughs> for sure. Digital marketing is so huge. Yeah, so it's gonna be segmented for sure. Um, definitely segmented for sure. I'll do that bit by bit. Okay, so this is the one thing that I want to tell you. All right, this is the one thing that I want to say. Uh, look, I have a book. All right, I have a social media book. If you haven't gotten that already. I would love, love, love for you to actually, um, you know, get the book because that social media book is everything across, um, um, is everything across, um, you know, nine different platforms. Okay, uh, nine different platforms. Look, um, I know, is 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 it sounds to it sounds to you like oh my god, it's like twenty bucks, you know? But trust me when I say that, like, um, uh, this book is so helpful because every single uh, uh, every single social platform from YouTube to like Facebook to TikTok even to even TikTok I have I have it in step by step format this book is only 1990 uh, this e-guide is only 1990 and I think this is so so key uh, for you to actually um, um, get to understand even the platform so what I'm doing is I'm, I, I will actually be creating a webinar specifically for students who bought the book because I, I i need i want to go through the book so that the book has all these steps like ads and all that so it'll be good if you have the book so that you will actually follow through because if not uh think of it as your textbooks think of it as your textbook okay right um so um, that is the thing that I want to I wanna share with everyone that we actually also have a crash course um, and then we also have a program that is called um, UTCCY which is, uh, which is a three-month coaching class and as I've mentioned 
Um, we let me know videos. What platform does Nimble use? If you don't mind sharing, Nimble videos are platform in terms of um, hosting it. We host it on YouTube in terms of the apps and the tools. Um, that is something that I have to share, and I share that only amongst my students who are uh, um, um, who are my uh, you know coaching students. So here's the thing: as I mentioned, I'm such a high touch person. I usually train people who are next to me or like i'm in a conference and i'm a very high touch i would like to actually um share this offer uh, with everyone because it's such a small group uh thank you ada for, for for purchasing my book um so it's such a small group so this is what i, I realized for the past two weeks I've promised my Malaysian audience that I will actually go over to actually teach my Malaysian audience my crash course. And only to realize that in four years worth of content knowledge, I was, I don't think it's possible to put them all in video tutorials. I still believe strongly in my coaching classes. So I definitely will offer this. What I want is anyone is uh, in a crash course with me, all right? We are basically taking the crash course um, and actually uh, and, and doing it online where it's still me and you across a, uh, across a few hours, right? So the entire crash course is about, uh, I would say, about 15 hours worth of training and we have to break them up according to different, different days. So what I want to do is I want to offer this to my students uh, who actually want to, to learn coach, to learn directly from me and we spend two hours per day across multiple days until you're done with the crash course. We'll do homework together, we'll do assignments together, I keep track of your ads, I make sure that you are progressive and this uh, crash course um, is exclusive going to be provided to my coaching students so I'm actually offering it at an offer um, at an offer and I'm only looking for five students five students to coach yeah online five students to coach because I uh, I may not have the capacity to coach any more uh, than five students to be very honest so there will be an email yeah there will be an email that will be sent to everyone and uh, and then after that you can decide if you want to be coached directly from me i only need two hours of your time across multiple days and it's going to be like this i'm going to watch you i'm going to see how you do your ads and everything that i plan for in my utccy as well as my crash course um the link is all here There you go. Welcome to Nimble Academy. It is everything that I'm so passionate about. It is everything that I believe in. And I believe that I still love to coach. And I would like to try this on this uh, online platform. And I want to try this with you. So you will get an email from me right after this uh, to let you know of my fantastic offer and see if we can actually grow our business together online uh, via, via my training. So um, um, thank you for uh, thank you for listening in. I hope you've gotten a lot of value from this. Um, if you have any questions post uh, webinar, please ask me. I have about a minute. You could you uh, if there's anything that anyone wants to ask me about the apps. Um, don't worry, I will talk about apps uh, in a minute. Uh, don't I don't have to worry because in my in my file, right, right, I have all these tools that I mentioned. All right, I have all these tools that I've mentioned called Later, as well as Linktree, as well as Biteable Video Maker, as well as Easel, as well as Adobe Spark. These are all the tools that you definitely need to get you, to get you a head start uh, into your video marketing. So I hope I've answered your question, Dan, um, that these are some of the tools that you use. But of course, in Crash Course, there are about 100 tools that I teach in class. So um, thank you so much for being such a fantastic, fantastic audience, even though uh, everyone's quite shy to come in the webinar, but I hope to actually nurture um, some of these, uh, some of you uh, to actually be interactive so that we can learn from each other. Uh, I thank you so much for um, coming to my webinar. It's my very first time. Let me know how it is. Uh, let me know what you feel, uh, whether or not this is great, but I should do more of this. And I'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, as always. Have a good Saturday. Stay safe. Uh, keep yourself, keep your hands clean. Um, and, um, and, and hopefully, I pray, pray that um, everyone is um, in good health. Thank you, guys. Thank you, ladies. Bye.